brilliant to see so many of you here tonight. And I'm going to be introducing to you a little bit about our Iona cohort study, which is our main program, and also a little insight into some of the research studies that you might be able to get involved in beyond that as well. So I'm going to tell you who, what, and why for the Iona Longitudinal Cohort Study. And a lot of um, the information will be a bit of a taster. Some of this will then be answered by some of my colleagues after the break. But also, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to come and speak to us at the stand later. Or leave your details, and we'll get in touch with you. So who are we looking for? We have a very broad inclusion criteria for this particular study. We're looking for people who are aged 50 years and above, who are living in Scotland. We're recruiting exclusively in Scotland right now for this project. And we are looking for people who have a study partner. So that is anyone who's aged 18 and above, who knows you well enough to answer some questions about how you get on on a daily basis, any memory or thinking problems you might have, because often it's the people we live with or the people we spend the most time with who notice these problems first. The study partner does not have to live in Scotland, importantly, as long as they see you or they're in touch with you frequently enough to know you pretty well. And we're looking for a really broad range of people in terms of their brain health. So we're looking for people who are healthy volunteers in terms of their memory and thinking. But we're also looking for people who already have a diagnosis, maybe of mild cognitive impairment, or maybe they're in the earliest stages of dementia. And whilst we're going to talk a lot tonight about Alzheimer's disease specifically, we are also open and would welcome anyone who has a diagnosis of dementia due to any other cause to come forward and have a chat to us as well. And we have a very ambitious aim of up to 10,000 people across Scotland over the next few years to join this particular project. So now we know who we're looking for, what might you be asked to do? So what we're trying to do within our research studies to, is to build a really good understanding of what your brain health and what your physical health looks like at that moment in time, and to follow you up over a number of visits so that we can really understand what might be happening to different people's brain health over time. So we do that through a number of different things that we'll ask you to do. We ask you to do quite a few questionnaires. Those of you who are participants already will know quite how many that you might have to go through. Miles is going to cover this a bit later, but it will be about things like diet, sleep, your mood. And this is where your study partner comes in and is really important to answer some of those questions as well. We then do a series of memory and thinking tests. And John and Miles will speak a lot more about this in much better detail later. But we're looking to get a really good picture of how your brain is working at that first visit. And then also follow up over time to see what, if anything, is changing. About half of our participants will also do an MRI scan. So that's a magnetic resonance imaging scan. And this allows us to see what's happening inside your brain. And we'll be picking people based on various criteria of who we think might um, benefit most from being able to have these scans, but also to give us a really good picture of people in different stages from completely no risk up to accumulating higher stages of risk for dementia. We'll ask people to donate blood samples. And Alison will talk in much more detail about this later as well. And we do two things with our blood samples. Some of them go off for clinical testing. And that will be things like you might be quite used to getting at your GP surgery, like your cholesterol tests. And if there's anything abnormal in any of that, we feed the information back to you so that you can work with your GP to um, be able to make any changes around that. And the same half of people who will get MRI scans will also be asked to undergo lumbar punctures. So this part of the study, importantly, is optional as well. And we always make sure it's safe for people to do these procedures. The lumbar puncture is how we would collect the cerebrospinal fluid that Craig mentioned. And this is really important for us to be able to test for biomarkers or biological markers of Alzheimer's disease. And importantly, we will feed this information back to you as well so that you would have this information. And finally, we do medical history checks. So we'll check what diagnoses you have already, what medications you're taking, and also just general well-being checks, things like blood pressure, your hearing. And again, if there's anything that we notice within that that is outside of normal limits, we feed this back to you so that you can take action on it. So we see you once a year at our research center. And then between that, we have just a relatively quick phone call with you and your study partner giving you the opportunity to ask any questions. And we also complete a couple of very brief questionnaires at that point. 
So finally, moving on to the why. Why are we doing this? Why might you want to take part? First off, we are interested in something called disease modeling. So we want to build a cohort that represents the Scottish population. And that means one of the things that we will be starting to do is trying to work within communities that don't always get well re represented within research studies. That will be quite a long, slow build because we need to build trust within communities that don't always come and take part in our research. We're also importantly including people across that spectrum of risk for dementia. So like on two slides ago, it's why we want people who are completely healthy all the way through to people who already have diagnoses because that's really helpful for us to understand a lot more about these diseases. And then that's also why we ask people to come back year after year, because we'll follow development of disease over time to really learn a lot more about how these diseases progress. The flip side of that is risk prediction. So there's a lot of questions that we don't know the answers to currently about where are people in their risk for future disease or future progression of disease. Why do people have that particular risk? And what do different risks look like over time? Can we see you at your first visit with a relatively low risk and then you uh, rapidly accumulate risk? Do some people come in with quite high risk but actually manage to change that? These are all things we don't have a huge amount of data or information on right now, but we hope Iona will be one of the solutions to answering some of these questions. And then importantly, it is the opportunity to take part in future research studies. So, as I've said, we will disclose anything that is clinically relevant. So that means anything that we understand what it means from a clinical perspective, and you might be able to do something about. And one of those options of doing something about could be to take part in other research trials. So this could be taking part in a trial of a new medication, could be taking part in another intervention, or a study where we're looking at um, ways to better detect and diagnose disease. So I've just got one final slide to finish up on here, and it's just a little bit of a deeper dive into what that future research looks like, but also importantly, introducing PPI, which is our patient and public involvement work. So in terms of future research, we're thinking about what are the opportunities for you, your data, your samples. Some of these opportunities will only be open to people who are enrolled in the Iona Longitudinal Cohort Study because of the way they've been set up and designed whereas others might be open to you regardless of whether you're in that main cohort or not. And when we're thinking about research studies, we may be thinking about things like new medications. So this could be trialing a new tablet or a new infusion or a new injection to see how effective this is at treating the disease at different time points throughout the course. We might be looking at discovering new biomarkers. So this would be using the blood and the cerebrospinal fluid that we collect within the lumbar punctures to see if we can better detect or better diagnose diseases using these actual biological markers of the disease. And then finally, as I'd mentioned on the previous slide, using the data to really analyze kind of much better knowledge about risk prediction, disease modeling. And finally, but definitely not unimportant, is our patient and public involvement work. So we have been really lucky to work with the amazing groups at Alzheimer's Scotland, the Scottish Dementia Working Group and Endocan who have given amazing input into designing the Iona study to date. What we want to do now is really start to formalize that to be able to bring in even more voices to the work that we're doing. So we'll have three different levels of patient and public involvement. People can get involved in one, two, or three. It's completely open. Everything's very flexible and optional. Levels one and two are going to be just completed virtually, um, or we can kind of support you on the phone to complete these. Level one might be doing a survey, maybe it will take 20 to 30 minutes. Level two is where we need a little bit more complex input, so maybe we've got some participant-facing information that we need a bit of help with. And this is where we'll ask for people to spend maybe one or two hours supporting with this. And then finally, level three is a much more um, involved level, so this is where we'd like to set up panels so that we can really get into some of the more complex issues and discuss with people in a lot more detail. Those might be virtual, they might be in person. We typically tend to let the people who come forward decide what they would prefer and do. So we're formally launching this tonight. If you're interested in taking part, you can come and have a chat to us at the stand. And we'll be opening these opportunities up over the coming months. And there'll be a lot more information about what it means and also kind of training to 
get involved in things like this. Thank you.